All right, onto the hammer. So this hammer is a little bit more complex than a wrench. There's a lot more planes to it. It's not like the wrench in terms of, um, you know, there just being more or less just the top, bottom, and then, you know, the track that we kind of had all the way around. Now, you have to remember that if I kept all this track for my wrench together in one piece, it would have been very long. It would have extended really far. It would have have to be, you know, shrunken down as one piece. And you know, if I had used pack, where pack always tries to make sure that all the UVs are uh, the same size relative across the entire model, then what would have happened is I would have ended up with a result where, you know, the main top and bottom of the wrench would have been really small, and you know, all this would have been together in one long uh, row but I would have only been using maybe this much of the texture map and the rest of it would have been blank. So of course breaking up the entire span here sometimes it's you know good to do this. Anyways moving back onto the hammer you know you really have to analyze these kind of models in terms of their shape. This one is a little bit more complex in that I see here a plane from this point of view here I see a cylindrical shape here all the way across to there. If I look from the top, I see a more or less flat section. I can then take this more complex shape all the way out here and use the unwrap tool. And then once again, I have the cylindrical shape here, here, and then flat shape here. So you really have to think about the way you're going to be unwrapping these objects in terms of their actual shapes and how these projection tools that you have will be able to assist you, which tool was going to be the best for that purpose. So I'm just going to start mapping and I'm just going to choose, actually, I guess I could choose I could do one thing. I could, uh, again, just choose UV projection tool. I could try my luck with Atlas. And, eh, it's not the best, but, you know, it picks out certain areas right off the bat for me. I got these two sections already finished. I can then take all of this. I can cut that out to here or just move it or like away. I can then take all of this. You know, I'm just taking a guess here what belongs to what, but you know, I made the right move. And I wonder what this part is about, but I think it's just now those are the outside polygons, so nope. And you know, if you want to deselect a portion like after I select an island, like that. What I could do is I could press and hold control, double click on a part on an island, and it will deselect it. Same thing with edge loops. If I, for example, double click on an edge loop and then I end up pressing, you know, shift to add more edge loops. If I really want, I could always press control and double click on that edge loop and it will automatically delete it or deselect it. I forget if that's an actual script that I use, uh, you know, it's been a while, but, uh, you know, if you're not getting that happening, then uh, go to Seneca Menard's website and just download that. But in any, in any event, what I really am after is I'm just after this part. I can double click and hold shift to select that. I can move it away again. And I'm really just trying to select sections of this model. This once again is that. And really, this entire piece is that. Well, okay. When I work on these kind of objects, what I really like to do is I like to make a new new item, a few new items. And what this gives me is it gives me a bit of breathing room as far as cutting and pasting goes. I can very quickly 
you know, select something like this. I can cut it out, paste it into a new object. Once again, I can take all of this, cut, paste into another object altogether, take that, cut, paste, I can take all that, cut, and paste. So now we have our entire object split into a few pieces. This is going to make it a lot simpler for me to go back and reconnect and you know do all that. So for example, I have something like this, you know, this cylindrical part of the model. Well, you have to remember again, physically, this section of the model is perfectly welded together. It's one piece, this section of the model. It's just the UVs that are in fact, separate. Because that's what Atlas uh, you know, projection did. It separated all these parts. So all I really have to do is I just have to select one portion of this right here, go to Unwrap, and I have my result for that part. And that's fine. Next up, this thing here. This has actually been perfectly UV'd. I like the results for this. I don't know about the uh, legibility, but uh, this works. That works fine. And I'm guessing that's a 7G, so that works as well. So this works just fine. So that's already UV'd. I'm going to assign a texture map to this. Again, this works. And I just make my way down the model and I unwrap like that. Now when you reach these parts like this, you know, where you're having a lot of uneven lines and you might want to make sure that those lines are even, it really is up to you. You know, you could just, again, do that whole trick where you're using center, local. Of course, negative has to be off. You do that edge loop, edge uh, ring, and now you have a clean line right across the silhouette of this model, right across this uh, the uh, contour. So that part is finished now, and now we go on to the more complex part in which I am going to be splitting this into a few pieces. So this part really can be all on its own. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select that. I'm going to cut that as well into its own piece. Now I'm just pretty much left with this. And to be honest, I kind of like this section here. I might grow the selection just once. I might cut it out into, once again, another model altogether. I'm going to hit unwrap on that piece. And I'm going to hit unwrap again, and I'm going to try to use, you know, I'm going to try to change the planes that it's unwrapped from, and of course this result I like, so I'm just going to once again hit the material. I have a perfectly unwrapped section for that. For this part of the model, once again I just choose an axis that I want to cut along. I have something like this. That's not too bad. Of course, for this, I really what, what I could have done is I could have just used projection tool, cylindrical. Again, there's really no right answer. Just remember that. I get something like that, so now I can just do that. That works for me. Again, that's projected. And now all I really need to do is just fix this up. So now this, I can see still a few planes in this object here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, first off, split this part off. Because I, again, I, I see a few planes that I have to cut on. So I'm going to leave that on its own. Or rather, like that. I'm going to cut that out into its own piece. 
I'm going to go back and select this layer here. And I really should map this thing and see what it looks like when it's mapped. And that's not good. Not good at all. This does not look nice. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to cut the object along here. And again, see what I get. And that's actually a lot better. I'm liking this a lot more. And for most people, this really could be enough. I mean, you know, this is not that bad. Now, what I could technically do is I could cut the object along like that, unwrap it, try to get a little bit more See, that's not too bad. Now, granted, we have two big seams along here, so sometimes you might just want to only have... You might to want to limit your seams, really, so something like that in the middle is probably better, where you can still paint right across and only worry about the seam in the middle, and not so much along the other sides of the, uh, of the model. And, of course, all you're left with is now just this ring here and for that I'm just going to use the projection Y scale I don't know if it's good yet so just keep scaling and of course turn on negative like that and that part of the model is done so I'm just going to paste it back in and I'm just going to start pasting all these pieces together so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all of them I'm going to cut select only one item paste all of it into one now I'm going to select this entire model merge and I'm going to just pack this up and my result is like this and that's not too bad everything's legible everything's okay and yeah I mean that's basically the hammer so for the hammer we ended up using uh, you know Atlas at first to give break up the model into pieces select the pieces that I like move them away divide the model up into many different uh, pieces and uh, you know scatter them around uh, you know each every single one of these planes as a separate piece unwrap them individually and once they are unwrapped individually and you know you uh, you know used all your projections that you explored maybe some types of projections were giving you better results maybe some others were not um, you know again you use the best that you could at the time that you were given paste it all back into you know you select all your objects paste it all back into one select the entire object weld the vertices because the model has been technically physically cut and of course as you can see here I have some parts that have been smoothed out and others that have not so to remedy this because now I have some subdivision surfaces and then I have pol uh, polygonal objects what you can do of course is if I just expand this slightly and I go to my statistics and I go to polygons by type subdivisions you can see that I have regular faces, regular polygons, and I have subdivisions, subdivision surfaces rather. If I just select the subdivision surfaces, you'll notice that it picks everything except whatever is not subdivided. All I have to do now is just press tab and it should have worked. And now the reason why it's not working is because I, I am in fact using a script by uh, Seneca which smooths out. If I just select any part of that model and I press tab, it will smooth out the entire section. That's fine. All I really have to do is deselect that. I just have to select that piece, unweld it, and just basically do that. Where I cut that part out, and now I'm able to, once again, reconnect it with the rest of the model. And now it's all one piece. So, next up, 
we're going to be UVing the head.